We're going to see how do we persevere, how do we run, and how do we run with joy. So Philippians chapter 3, 12 through 16. Look at this passage. I love Paul so much. He uses the best ideas. All right, here we go. So Philippians chapter 3, 12 through 16. Let me read this out loud for us. It says, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, all of us who are uh, then, who are mature, should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. But go back with me, verse 14. Let me just zero in on here. I got it on a screen too. I press on toward the goal to win the prize. So there's this idea in Paul, he's saying, I'm racing, I'm running, I'm pressing on. And I know there's something ahead of me. It's not just an aimless running around, but there's a goal that I'm headed towards and I'm eager for it because it's, it's a prize to me. I'm pressing on. This idea of a race, of a run, a marathon going forward. But what is it that Paul is racing for? What is it that he's setting his heart on? Is it, here's the question, is it to be saved? Is he trying to run so that God would accept him? Is he trying to run so that he would know that God has redeemed and restored him? No, I just want to say, no, that is not what Paul is running after. Do you remember on Tuesday night, I talked about how what some people think wrongly that Christians say is that our life is all about these checks and these X marks about whether or not we have done enough good things so that when we arrive at the end of our life and there's the verdict of whether or not we've been good enough, we'll know we'll be accepted. That's not what Paul's talking about. He's not saying, I'm trying to run and do this well enough so that by the end, God will accept me and love me. That's not the kind of race Paul is in. As I said Tuesday night, there's this verdict, if you remember. The scales have already been matched, but not because of how we've lived, not because of what we've done, but because of the death of Jesus. And to clarify, this isn't necessarily true of everyone. It's true of those who have put their trust, their faith in Jesus and his death for them. When that's happened, the verdict has been given and it's no longer running to be accepted by God. That's not what this race is about. Not trying to earn salvation, as we said. It's something that's given to us. So if salvation's given already to Paul, what is he running for? What's he chasing down? What's such a beautiful goal to him that he's setting his eyes on this? Well, he tells us more. In verse 12, he says this, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. This is beautiful. He's saying that there is a reason that Jesus took a hold of him. So it's not like it was an accident that God's like, oh, oh, Paul just ended up being saved. No, there's a reason and a purpose that God wanted to take a hold of Paul's life. And Paul is saying, the reason why Jesus took hold of me is the reason I'm running. It's why I'm going after. So if you know your heart has been taken hold of by God, it wasn't an accident. It's something very purposeful that God did because he has something in mind for you. But still, what, what is this? What is Paul talking about? What's he trying to take hold of? We got to go back a little bit farther. I didn't read this, but we'll dive into this more tonight. But he says in verse 10, I want to know Christ. I want to know him. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. What Paul is saying, the thing I am chasing down 
that I want so eagerly, that I'm running for, is to know Christ. To know Christ. Again, this has a bit of an oddness or strangeness to it. Because when I sometimes read something like this, I'm like, Paul, don't, don't you already know Christ? Why are you still running for this? Don't you know him already? What's important to get here is that Paul is not talking about an intellectual kind of knowing. He's talking about a relational heart knowing. There can be more depth to that. See, in an intellectual kind of knowing, there's not a lot of growth to happen. For instance, the simplest thing ever, right? Two plus two equals, don't be crazy, overly smart, four, right? Two plus two equals four. When you know this, like hopefully I did that math right, that would be really funny. If, if you know this, right, you can't really know it more. <laughs> like, it's not like two plus two is four, you, you can't grow in that kind of knowledge. It's, it's, you, you know it already. There's no deeper to go. Intellectually, when you get something, there's no more knowing of that to do. But with a person, it's different. With an idea, once you get it in your mind, you know it. But with a person, when you know them, there's actually more knowing to grow in. So Paul is saying this know here is not just a head knowledge. It's not just an idea. It's not intellectually that I know things about Jesus. He's saying I have a relationship, so I'm eager to know him more. Think about this in the idea of, let's say, a marriage, right? When people get married, do they know one another? Like, yes, hopefully, <laughs> not all the time. It's a, interesting marriages. Um, but when you marry someone, you know them well. But do you give up trying to get to know the person more once you're married? Not at all. Exact opposite, actually. You marry them because you know them already and because you are eager to know them all the more. You're not just like, oh, now that we're married, I guess we're just going to kind of do our own thing here. And they're like, I want to spend more time with you. I want to have more time to get to know you more and more and more for the rest of my life because I love you. You're a person that I am so interested in spending my life with. This is so much closer to what Paul is saying about Christ. I have a relationship here. I know him already, but I'm not satisfied in that. I want to go deeper in my knowing of him, in my relationship that this would be all the richer in my heart. So for you, like here today, like thinking about this, do you know Jesus intellectually or do you know Jesus relationally? 